Thank you, Wendy, for that beautiful song. Our scripture for today is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And while you're turning there, please allow me to simply introduce Samuel, uh, Samuel Abraham, or Abraham Samuel, it's a family movie, is a godly man who has been our elder in our church for many years. He has preached in this church before. He has also prayed in this church many times. And we are very happy that he is able to preach today because his fiance, Jeevna, has never heard Samuel speak before. So this will be very special for her and for him. And uh, so I invited Samuel to speak today so that he could share his message with you. And Samuel, we love you, we appreciate you, and we're glad that you and, and your family and friends could be here today. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. How are you? How are you all doing? Good, good, good. Good. How many of you happy in Jesus? Amen. 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 I could see so many hands. I'm so blessed to be here. I'm sure you all enjoyed that animal story very much today. And sure, Pastor brought a wonderful story. It's a great privilege and providence to me to be here this morning. I'm glad to see my members back again. Surely I miss you all. Though God led me to the different direction to do his work, I remember my church and the congregation. It's sad to see so many of them are absent today. Heard that they are sick. Hope they will be here tomorrow. And... Uh, I would like to extend my thanks to my dear brothers and sisters from Maryland and a brother from, uh, wa not Washington, Michigan, and also my brother Jacob from India. So thank you for your prayers. And as I was talking with pastor, pastor wasn't feeling well. So... We were praying for him, and uh, sad to hear Debbie's not here today. Hope she'll feel better tomorrow. And uh, I appreciate our pastor's effort in helping us in every aspect of our lives. I'm sure definitely God will reward for that one. Today, I, you know, my brother played a, a tabla. It's called tabla, Indian drum. Indian drum. So I thought of singing an Indian song uh, to begin with, then I can proceed from there. Uh, uh. When I came to the church, something attracted me so much. What is written there? I didn't hear from you. What does it say? King of Kings. The theme of the song that we are going to present to you, we three are called Kingdom Preachers. We preach only about Kingdom. Do you know why? Do you want to be in the Kingdom? How many of you want to be in the Kingdom? Amen. Unless you know the King, what did they say? Unless you know the king, you cannot be in the kingdom of God. That's the theme of the song. 
Do you know the king? Do you know Jesus? Amen. If not, it's time for you to know Jesus. That's the theme of the song. And you'll be accompanied by the Indian drum. <clears throat> Purinjiko, Nalla Terinjiko, Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nalla Terinjiko, Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nalla Terinjiko, Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Kalamini Saladi, or a Kasum Koda Varadi, Un Patta Mange Chaladi, Un Chatta Mange Chaladi, Veli Vesha Mange Chaladi, 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 Purinjiko, Nalla Terinjiko, Terinjiko, yes, we are in Jiko, Purinjiko, Nalla Terinjiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nalla Terindiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Mardi Mala, Mardi Ketto, my dear Mister. Mardi Levid, one Dutch Alanga, Mister. Mardi Mala, Mardi Ketto, my dear Mister. Marma eleved wunda chalanga, mister. Wadi wadi sot the chair, come my dear mister. Sot the wunda paralaga till chalanga, mister. Purinjiko, nalla terinjiko. Terinjiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, nalla terinjiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nalla Terindiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Naga in Mel and Naga a port of my dear sister. Nala Naga wooden vara, the Terry of my sister. Naga in Mel and Naga a port of my dear sister. Nala in a gay wooden vara, the Terry, you my sister. Many, many kai would like pay, no, my dear sister. Aduman Nicola, my kipogam, Terinjiko, sister. Terinjiko, Nala, Terinjiko. Terinjiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nala, Terinjiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Purinjiko, Nalla Terindiko. Terindiko, yes, we are in Jiko. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm getting married to Abraham Samuel, and God has given this privilege to present his song to you all. I hope you'll enjoy. I'll tell the meaning of the song. I'm going to sing in Telugu. Uh, well, Lord has died for us, and he suffered a lot for all of us. And we are unable to uh, understand his love, how much he loves us. And we are trying to request him, Lord, please forgive our sins and take us. We cannot bear these pains anymore. That's our prayer every day to God. Thank you. Parishutami Prabhuvunaku Paraloka Tejunaku Parishuta me Prabhu Naku Paraloka Tejunaku 
ವರದೂತ ಪೂಜುನಕು ಪರಿಶುಧ ದಿವಿನುಂಡಿ ಭುವಿಖಿ ಏ ತೆಂಚಿನ ವೈಯ ಸುವಾತರಕ್ಷಣನು ಅಂದಿಂ ಪಚೇಯ ಗನು ಪಾಪಾಲ ಪಂಪಿನ್ ನಿಜಮೈನ ದೇವುಡನು ಪರಲೋಕ ವೆಲುಗುನು ಇಹಲೋಕು ಪಂಪಿನ್ ನಿಜಮೈನ ದೇವುಡನು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಮೇ ಪ್ರಭುವುನಕು ಪರಲೋಕ ತೇಜುನಕು ವರದೂತ ಪೂಜುನಕು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಮೇ ನೀ ಧರ್ಮ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಮೇಗ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸತ್ಯ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಮನಿ ಆ ಶಿಲ್ಪಾನುಭವ ಮೇ ಜನುಲಾಕು ರಕ್ಷಣನಿ ಪ್ರಕಟಿಂಚು ನೇರ್ಪುಟೇ ನಿಜಮೈನ ಧನ್ಯುತು ಪರಲೋಕ ವೆಲುಗುನು ಇಹಲೋಕು ಪಂಪಿನ್ ನಿಜಮೈನ ದೇವುಡನಿ ಪರಲೋಕ ವೆಲುಗುನು ಇಹಲೋಕು ಪಂಪಿನ್ ನಿಜಮೈನ ದೇವುಡನಿ ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಮೇ ಪ್ರಭುವುನಕು ಪರಲೋಕ ತೇಜುನಕು ವರದೂತ ಪೂಜುನಕು ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಮೇ How beautiful. How beautiful that song. Thank you so much. Jacob, you need to calm down. <laughs> Just kidding. Wasn't that interesting? And her voice was so beautiful and it was so lovely. And thank you so much and thank you for playing the drum. It was very interesting. And uh beautifully played and I wish what was the main uh theme of the song? Christ died for you. You need to understand that God loves you and praise him more and more. What a beautiful message, amen. And it's so fun, isn't it, to learn about other cultures and understand how other people praise God. I think it's just wonderful that all around the world in every voice, you know, uh Jesus said to every language every kindred and tongue that his gospel will be preached in all the world and thank god for that and up in heaven won't it be wonderful when we're on the sea of glass and we're all together all right brother abraham please continue on very beautiful thank you so much for that song and thank you wendy for the song too that was so beautiful This morning I would like to turn your attention to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. No show. Bible 
But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath morning. Thank you for our Lord Jesus who loves us very dearly. This morning we gathered here to give praise and glory to his holy name. Accept our praise, Lord, as we meditate the scripture. May your Holy Spirit guide our thoughts to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ and to learn from it and to put it into practical life so that we could bring many people to your kingdom. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Once the little girl was sitting in the kitchen dining table looking at the mother, watching her washing the dishes and said to her, Mom, how come your head is, your hair is getting white one after the other? And she said, Oh, little one, whenever you make mistake, what happens? One gets turned. And then immediately she said, she said I could understand about grandma now. <laughs> you know, children teach us so many things, don't they? Well, I loved this. I couldn't see what happened to our uh, projector. You don't know? That's fine. I loved this uh, saying. I read it in somewhere. 100 years from now, it will not matter what kind of car you drove, what kind of house I lived in, how much money I had in my bank account. Not what my clothes look like, but the world may be better place because I was important in the life of a child. You know why I'm bringing that today? I was preaching from the book of Samuel. So when pastor told me to preach, I said, let me continue my sermon. You know, I enjoy reading the book of Samuel. It brought so many great things to my life. Hannah prayed for Samuel very faithfully. Samuel became a mighty prophet in Israel after many years. When Samuel was growing, there was not much prevalent the word of God. People were in darkness, worshiping idols, went astray as captives to Philistines. Here comes God's ra God raises Samuel. How he came? Because of his faithful mother's prayer. So here comes, I want you to turn to your Bible to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 16 chapter, first words, since we didn't have the uh, PowerPoint up there. 16th chapter, First verse, the Bible says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided myself a king among his son. You know, when I was reading that text, you know, I saw that a prophet was mourning. You know, many times we wonder, can God's children become sad? Can they mourn? Can the sad things happen to them? You know, it was his highest dream when, so, when he saw Saul 
a tallest guy, you know, among Israel. And he was so happy because God chose a tallest guy to rule the nation. So he was so happy, he anointed him and he made him a king. And God said, go do whatever people ask. They didn't reject you, they rejected me. It's fine, they can have a king. So God blessed Saul too. We read that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he guided the people for some time. But what happened? When the trials and challenges came, he didn't stick with the Lord. At the end, we read a story that he went to the witch endorsed. What a sad thing happened to a godly king. And Samuel's heart was broken by seeing every step of Saul's act. And he was mourning. Because he wanted to see the children of Israel being a light to the world. <coughs> because he worked hard more than 20 years. He went city after city, preached the word of God. And he brought their mind together just to focus on the Lord, not on anything. But here comes Saul, destroying everything. Very devastated situation. So he was mourning. You know, in that same line, you could see that. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him. Can God reject somebody? You know, that's a very scary thing. When God rejects somebody, what happens? Who can get in? The devil can get in. You know, when you read the book of Samuel, what do you read there? When Saul was in, in, in the witch Endor's house, it was dark. And when he left, it was dark. The darkness captured him. The same thing you could see in the life of Judas Iscariot. When Judas Iscariot left the place, the Bible says it was dark. Don't we see the dark world today? Everywhere. People are living in darkness. Unless the light of Jesus Christ comes in their life, they cannot have a light. Do you agree with me? If you say agree with me, say amen. amen. You know, the Bible is very clear. I have rejected him. God rejected Saul from reigning over Israel. You know, what do I see here? God was telling him, go. It's okay. He left me. He believed something else. Go anoint somebody else. So he's giving a new task to Samuel. And what do you read there? And Samuel said the second verse, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. Who is talking these verses? You know, the prophet, you know, the Bible is very clear. Prophet is not a special great person. They are like one among us. But what do they do? They communicate with God more than us. <coughs> what do you read there? He will kill me. He was so scared about Saul. Well, God could have said, well, I'm going to kill him. You go and do the work. God didn't say that one. You know, the book of Isaiah chapter 9, chapter 9 verse 6 very clearly gives the titles of our God. A counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father. You could see that. Here, God is giving counsel to whom? Samuel. What kind of counsel? Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Who is teaching this one? <laughs> God could have said, you go, I'll protect you. You know, that's why I love Jesus so much. He's a great counselor to us. When we go through trials and challenges, he's there to give counsel to us. What needs to be done? You know, that's what I could see here. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. 
you shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled. I wonder here too, why the elders of the town need to be trembled when the prophet goes? Did anyone thought about it? You know, I was thinking about that one. Why they have to be trembled? <laughs> you know, today people are free to go anywhere other than the church. And people are free to visit anybody other than the pastor. When pastor comes, why is he coming? Did we do anything wrong? You know, are we are busy. Can we reschedule him? You know, here the same society we could see long back. What do you read there? And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? They don't want to hear any, anything from the prophet. What a tragedy. Throughout the ages, God loves us. And God is willing to share his love with us. But we see that people are rejecting God's word. And he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself. And come with me to the sacrifice. Then... He consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. You know, what is the work of the prophet? What is the work of the Lord? Sacri uh, sanctify. You know, God is expecting his people to be a separate people, sanctified people, holy people, apart from the sins. That's what God is expecting. But what we are doing today... <laughs> You know, many times our focus changes. I was reading a story. Once there was a very rich guy. Very rich guy. Lived in a beautiful building. Beautiful house. Next to his house, there was a very small house. That house, you know, very poor in that house, very poor man lived. But that poor man had a very good voice. You know, he could sing very beautifully. So, what happened? This rich man was so attracted and he was so thankful for his songs. So he called him one day and said, I'm enjoying your songs every day. You are a very good singer. I just want to give you some money to you. So you can use that money. Like thousand dollar to him. As a gift. So this poor young man. He got that thousand dollar. The very first time. He got that amount. That much amount in his hand. So he didn't know what to do. So he took that money and he kept it under the pillow. And he went to sleep, but he couldn't sleep because he was so scared if someone come takes that money, what will happen? He didn't sleep that night. Usually he used to sing in the morning. That morning he couldn't sing because he was worrying about what to do with that money. Then he thought he needs to preserve that money well. In those days, no banks, nothing. So they had to keep in their homes. So he thought it would be fine to dig a place in the garden and hide that money. So he went with a stick and put that money inside and then he came home. He couldn't sing that day properly. You know, because he was thinking about what? How to save that money? How to preserve that money? You know, his mind went on something else. That rich guy was wondering, how come this guy didn't sing today? Then he thought, well, he might be busy today. So this happened for two, three days. 
and he didn't know what to do this guy he didn't know how to use that money and preserve that money and then finally he realized oh what a shame that i stopped my as usual thing what is the as usual thing singing and having fun then he said wow this money put an hindrance to me that i am not able to sing so he took that money and straight away went to that rich guy and he gave that money and said thank you for your money please let me be in peace you know he went back to his small house and started singing you know why i'm saying today many times our minds focused on something else that's why we are losing our peace and the relationship with god that's what happened to saul and here comes the sadness to the prophet and to the whole nation so it was when they came that he looked at eliab and said here comes again a tall guy surely the lord's anointed is before him but the lord said to samuel do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because i have refused him can god refuse somebody you know the first son of jesse a tall man is already in army he had experience being in the army but god said no i don't want him i don't want him for the lord does not see as man sees how many times we weigh the people by looking outside appearance think about that one you know outside appearances are what very deceptive i could still remember one day you know i was called to conduct the memorial service you know when i pulled in to the parking place and that guy didn't know that i was going to conduct the memorial service so he thought somebody you know someone is coming to attend the funeral service memorial service so when i pulled in and uh, he said would you please uh, go that side and park and i said sure sure and then uh, i to uh, you know i i asked him i you know i told him i am the one supposed to conduct the memorial service you know after that i need to visit the family and all where should i park the car and that's it that's all the word i said immediate oh you are the one reverend how are you doing you know you are shaking my hand you know and uh, can i open your car can i take anything from here you know the total atmosphere got changed because people see us in a different way but god see us in a different way that's what i understood in this very important story for a man looks at the outward appearance but the lord look at the heart so jesse called abinadab eighth verse says and made him pass before samuel and said neither has the lord chosen this man then jesse meant shema passed by and he said neither has the lord chosen one chosen thus jesse made seven of his sons pass before samuel what a struggle to samuel and samuel said to jesse the lord has not chosen these and samuel said to jesse are all the young men here then he said there remains yet the youngest and there he is keeping the sheep and samuel said to jesse send and bring him for he will not sit down till he comes here you know david was left alone with the sheep and here the scripture says so he sent and brought him now now he was ready with bright eyes and good looking and the lord said arise anoint him for this is the one you know god sees people in a different way he was considered as a shepherd boy the family considered him as a shepherd boy but god considered him as king you know many times that happens in our life being an adventist you know as i was visiting with somebody you know they are attending our church now in uh, in 
behind the, what is that? Columbus area. When they saw me, they asked me, what church you belong to? And I said, I belong to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Oh, you people are vegetarians and keep Sabbath on Saturday, right? And I said, well, no, she said, vegetarians are keeping a Jewish Sabbath. And I said, yeah, partly true, we are vegetarians, but we are not keeping the Jewish Sabbath. We are keeping the biblical Sabbath. And she asked, what? You, you are keeping the biblical Sabbath? Yeah. That's where the conversation started. And now she is attending the church. You know, when they see us, they think that we are also one among the cults. We don't know the Bible. That's what they think. And they think we are too conservatives. And we, they don't think we believe in Jesus Christ. When I said to someone, I'm, seventh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and he said, do you believe in Christ? You know, that was a shock to me. I said, I believe Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe He's coming. That's what the Seventh-day Adventist believes, that Jesus is coming soon. You know, people look at us outside, but God looks us inside. And what do we read in the Bible? The 13th verse says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. What happens when God anoints somebody? You know, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of this chapter. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. The story is over. You know, when God anoints you, you are a special person. You know, when God anoints you with the Holy Spirit, you are not the same person anymore. You could do a mighty thing. You know, I wonder why did God anoint David? How much did he come to know? You know, what a mighty God we serve. The Lord who can understand everything, who can see everything, what's going to take place in the future. When someone is afraid, this is what I say. Unless you forget the way the Lord guided in the past, you need to be afraid of the future. When you understand how the Lord guided you in the past, you don't need to be afraid of the future. How, how come, you know, why did God choose David? He saw, David saw God is mightier than any mighty one on the face of the earth. You know, when you read in the first Samuel, the next chapter, the 17th chapter, 47th verse. I like that verse very much. <coughs> you know, the 17th chapter talks about the battle between David and Goliath. What do you read there? Very important statement David makes. When the whole children of Israel trembled against Goliath, when they were shivering, even the king, the tallest guy, had no guts to face him, here comes David. What was he saying? Then all his assembly shall know that the Lord does, save, does not save with sword and spear, for the, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. You know, when he saw the battle, David said, this is not my battle. This is Lord's battle. I cannot fight against this big guy. You know, when he was talking with Saul, he said, you know, I had experience killing lion and bear, Saul was still laughing at him because David was a small boy, a teenager. Then he said, go and put all the armors. And David, when he put the armor and walked, he couldn't do anything. And he said, no, I cannot. I cannot fight with this one. I'll go the way as I go. <laughs> but he believed the mighty hand of God, the mighty power of God. You know, today in the world, people may consider us nothing, but God considered something 
That's why he died for our sins on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So here we see in the 47th verse, the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. You know, the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 32, Jesus says, Therefore, whoever confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Today, the Lord God called us to do that one. The Lord God called us to share the love of Christ to others and to share what we believe and what we are, who we are, how God called us. And here, David always remembered that one. The second point, what I learned from the life of David as a shepherd man, you know, he was willing to adopt the change. Many times, you know, we want to follow, we admire the truth. When we heard 28 doctrines, when we heard all the foundational truth, we said, this is good, great, but we want to go back to the old lifestyle because we don't want to come out from the comfort zone. But when I was reading about David, I saw he was willing to adopt the change. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 30, it says, And so it was, whenever they went out, that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. You know, when you see something, what do you do? When you hear something good, what do you do? Think about that one. And today, people are perishing in sickness and sadness. The devil is destroying every womb. You know, as I'm visiting as a chaplain, every home I go, only very few sickness. That is cancer, heart attack, cancer, heart attack. All kinds of organs failure. That's what I see. Why? But God has revealed a beautiful lifestyle to our Adventist society. How much we put it into practice. You know, when I was reading David, I said, God, help me to have a teachable spirit. I am reading, but I am not following. I am looking what's happening in the community, in the society. Where am I? Am I adopting your scripture into my life? Am I willing to follow your word in my life? Please, Lord, give me a teachable spirit. You know, what do I read here about David? You know, as a shepherd boy, he lived in the wilderness. He lived with a ship. But God shifted him to the palace. When he was shifted him to the palace, he didn't go back to the shepherd work. He was learning how to take care of the people here in palace. How to take care of the leadership. How to maintain the people. How to fight against the enemy. How to lead the battle. You know, he was going one after the other. The step after the step. One step leads to 1,000 steps. Right? So David was very faithful in God's guidance and following and willing to follow the word of God. I'm visiting with a patient, a 51 year old. She has breast cancer. And, uh, you know, her legs are not functioning. Her face, is, her face is getting numb. And she was telling Chaplain, would you please pray for me? I don't want to die now. I have 10 year old son. I want, I want him to come up in his life. So she requested to pray for, for her. And I told her, you know, you, you take the word of God and you pray with the word of God what the Lord wants to tell you. You know, I told her, you know, just take enough fruit juices and whole grains 
whatever you are able to. And then pray. Pray first and do this. You know what? Last time when I visited with her and she said, Pastor, my numbness is going down from the face. And I, my legs are twitching after a long time. Would you please keep praying for me? You know, she believes in the prayer. She's in the care for almost a year. Those who came along with her, so many people died. But here comes, she's still kicking. And I told her, keep praying. I'll pray for you too. And the Lord will do a mighty thing. You know, she was willing to adopt the change. And she said, I'm drinking more juice now. You know, whatever you said I'm following, I could feel the sensation in my face. I could feel the stomach after a long time. I want to thank you for giving this advice to me. Many people do not like advices. They say, oh, well, I know. I know. That is the famous saying from our young people, right? I know, daddy. I know, mommy. You don't need to tell me. I know. Right? So, but here, David, he was willing to adopt. That's why God saw him a different person. And the final one, doing good to evil. You know, Saul was threatening all his life. And he was focusing to kill him once for all. How many times Saul wanted to kill him? And David also had the opportunity to kill Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 24 verse 6, very plainly says, And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed. So stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. You know, he didn't want to touch Saul. He regretted even to cut his end of his cloth. What a faithful servant. He believed that God is in control of everything, even bad things happen. You know, I wondered why did the whole book of Samuel and the second whole book of Samuel only talking about David. David emulated the character of Jesus Christ, loving the enemy. That's what I could see it there. Do good, even those who do evil to you. You know, he didn't want to do anything to Saul. He said, if you want, if, let him die naturally or do whatever God wants. What a great character from David. And also, as he was saying, as the, Proverbs, as the proverb of the ancient says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. What a great chapter. You know, in this morning, what I would like to share it with you, God looks our hearts. When man looks outside appearance, God looks our heart. And when you are faithful to the Lord, he knows how to preserve you. And he knows how to lift you up. And God called you and me to be in a great light to this world. You know, after David came, what happened when you, when you read the book of Samuel? He wanted to glorify the Lord. He wanted to build the temple. And he wanted to bring that glory again. He wanted to restore the sanctuary back again. And he wanted to magnify the Lord throughout his life. And he sang so many things and praised the Lord. Today, our famous chapter in the book of Psalms is the 23rd chapter. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. How many days? All the days of my life. He didn't stop right there. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means he can this world with the kingdom of God. 
through david jesus came through the lineage of david jesus came and jesus said i will come again i will come again yes the lord has called you and me like david in these last days in these last days are we willing to adopt the word of god faithfully and to bring glory and honor to the name of jesus christ and to proclaim his second coming because he believed in us he died for us it's our job today to stand up for the truth and to proclaim his coming so that his kingdom will come soon and we go to the kingdom of god may the lord god bless each and every one of us to have the teachable attitude like the david had and finally will be saved in the kingdom of heaven amen amen shall we bow our heads in prayer reverently kind and loving father which art in heaven thank you lord for all the blessings of life that what granted us in our lives father lord what a privilege it is for us to come to thy shrine seeking for thy blessings before thy throne of grace lord it is you who gave us this privilege father thank you for saving us from all harm and dangerous things oh lord thank you lord keeping us in a comfort zone oh lord thank you for everything you have granted us from heaven father lord we want to thank thee for this wonderful beautiful message that what granted to us father lord we have heard it help us to walk according to your will and wish father lord we want to thank thee for having a wonderful god who is not seeing as man sees father Lord we you are a god who is seeing man in a different way oh lord we want to thank thee for that blessing oh lord if not we would have gone away would have corrupted father we would have lost our life oh lord all because you see us oh lord thank you so very much for giving us that courageing words to us oh lord this is the way we have to keep a connection with god lord because of that lord we don't see man we don't see the world we don't see anything we see a god and our life to be holy father keep lord change our life help us to adopt only thine words and thy will to be followed father lord i pray for this uh, pastor of this church bless him bless his wife specially father be with her oh lord lord we heard we heard that she is not feeling well may your healing hand touch her heal her in the name of jesus christ father help us to see her tomorrow with joy peace and happiness and also with good health father lord i pray for all these church members who are gathered here today father bless each one of us especially i pray for the one who is not come today father for attending this church service please you meet them lord meet their requirements meet the needs that they are father if they are sick and suffering may your hand stretch forth and heal them by touching them in the name of jesus christ father be with us and guide us lead us and mold us and take care of us thank you lord once again for giving us this privilege to come to this church and worship thee thank you lord for the pastor thank you lord for the church members thank you lord for giving us this privilege father to see all our church members and pastor once again oh lord and also lord we remember now the forthcoming of marriage oh lord lord we remember that we place that into your mighty hand father please please father we invite you first to come to that marriage as people have invited jesus christ to the wedding of cana father we know lord all the things will be met as you come to our wedding father please be with our brother and sister who is going to be solemnized tomorrow in the marriage father may that be holy and be blessed father lord today as we are depart from this place may your presence abide us mold us and take care of us till we meet again by coming to this church i ask all these few blessings in the name of lord and savior jesus christ amen amen